Hey guys, uh, so uh, what I'm doing this lab is I'm just giving you a quick video uh, to show you how to calculate precipitation at a location that doesn't have a rain gauge based on precipitation data from rain gauges around that area. Um, and so uh, this is a new idea that I'm going to try to do running this YouTube video. Um, so uh, this YouTube video is really um, meant for our precipitation and infiltration lab, uh, which we're going to be running uh, for surface processes geology uh, 312. So if you're watching this video and it doesn't make sense, uh, really this is, this is for my class. Um, and so with that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a screen recording um, of the steps that we need to go through to calculate what the precipitation is at the infiltration basin that we're going to be using uh, this week in lab. And hopefully this is useful for you. Um, if this is useful for you, um, just you know, shoot me an email or let me know. Um, as I said, this is kind of a new idea that we're going to try out for the first time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump to um, showing you a screenshot of my computer and walking you through the steps. Uh, remember that we've talked about this stuff in class, so just uh, think about what we talked about in class. Um, look at your notes from class. Um, I think that the lab is pretty well spelled out on how to do this, and, and I, I think you can do this no problem. Uh, this is a longer video. I think this is like 15 minutes or something, which is crazy. Um, so um, look at this before. I, I suggest you look at this before lab so that you have an idea of what you're going to do so that you don't spend a bunch of lab time watching some video, right? All right. Uh, hey, you guys will do great. Okay, so here we are in the lab. Um, and so what we're going to talk about, like I just said a second ago, uh, was, is that we're going to talk about the procedures to determine historical precipitation um, at a site that doesn't have a precipitation gauge. So here's our site right here. Uh, this is our infiltration basin uh, between the Cook and the Hawksetter parking lot. Uh, and then if you scroll down here in the lab, uh, you'll remember from class that we just covered um, is here's our, here is an equation, and this equation gives us basically an idea of the weighted distance um, calculation for precipitation based on precipitation gauges that are at other locations. So basically, uh, we're going to look at today four different precipitation gauges, which are some distance away from our infiltration basin, and we're going to weight the results from those precipitation gauges in order to determine what the precipitation is at our location. And so just as a quick reminder, going through this equation, right here, P with the little hat on top, is going to be the precipitation um, at a given time X, at our precipitation at our infiltration basin and that's going to be equal to the summation or the addition of lambda which is the weight of a given precipitation gauge that is known times that amount of precipitation at that gauge so if you see lambda is the summation from i equals 1 to n in this case n equals 4 and we're going to for each time x, calculate the weight, which is lambda, which is going to be a constant, times the precipitation at first gauge 1, then gauge 2, then gauge 3, then gauge 4, and in each of those gauges, the, it's going to be multiplied by the specific gauge weight. Okay, um, That lambda, which you'll calculate just once, is described right here, and so lambda is equal to 1 over the distance squared between your infiltration basin and your known precipitation gauge, all divided by the sum of 1 over the distance between the infiltration basin and precipitation gauge 1, plus 1 over the distance between the infiltration basin and precipitation, precipitation gauge 2, plus 1 over the, infiltrate, the distance between the infiltration and precipitation gauge 3 plus 1 over the distance between the infiltration basin and gauge 4. So that's just what the summation is. So in order to pick out the four precipitation uh, gauges, I've actually already done that for you. Um, and so we'll be looking at um, a Northwest Williamsville gauge, an Audubon Industrial Park gauge, a gauge that's called Green Acres for some strange reason, um, and a Berwyn Drive gauge. Um, and we're going to get these measurements uh, based on the Weather Underground site, which is kind of a nice site, so the link here is provided for you. Um, we're going to open this up in a web browser. We'll see how quickly my computer goes. We'll copy and paste this into a web browser, I guess. 
<clears throat> the cool thing about the Weather Underground site is Weather Underground allows people to um, allows people to upload their own precipitation gauge um, data onto the website. So it's basically it's a method of citizen science where people are crowdsourcing things. So here's the map of Buffalo that you see here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. Uh, we're going to zoom in to UB. So here, here we are at UB. Uh, we know that our infiltration basin is somewhere right in this area right here. Um, and we're going to be looking for four different sites. Um, and so the first site is uh, actually, let's, the easiest site to find first is this Audubon Industrial Park site. And so on the Weather other Underground map, each one of these um, little circles represents what the current temperature is. So the temperature that you're seeing now is obviously um, a temperature from when I recorded this video, not from the time you're sitting there. Um, so your map will have different temperatures, but the same gauges will show up. Um, this, if I click on this upper gauge right here, what you'll see is that it shows up and it says Audubon Industrial Park. So I'm going to click on that. And this tells us what the current temperature is and the wind speed. And then it has a station identification number. What I need you to do is I need you to click on that station identification number. That will open up a new window. Um, and this new window is actually a window where we can get our historical data. So if we scroll down, uh, there's the current temperature. Here's a map of the Audubon Industrial Park um, gauge. And then down a little further, there's something that says uh, weather history for Amherst, New York, which is this gauge. So this is the section we're interested in. Right now it's set on daily mode, as you can see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this pull down menu and go to yearly mode. And then I have to go over here to the right and hit view for the page to update. And what I've found is that you may have to click on view a couple of times. For some reason, it kind of gets hung, hung up. Um, and so what it just did was it switched to a yearly mode. As we scroll down just a little further, you'll see some summary data. And then what we'll see is we'll see the historical record for what, in this case, temperatures were like over the last year at this gauge. This next is wind speed. This next graph here is wind direction. Down here is precipitation, which is what we're interested in. And then barometric pressure is down below. So um, we're looking right now on the graph view. What we need to do is we need to change tabs to the table view. That table view will show the date. This is just daily data. And then all of these other uh, weather parameters. Um, the last one that we're interested in is we're interested in precipitation. So if you click download up here in the top right hand corner, <clears throat> it will generate a data set which is a comma separated variables data set. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to select this entire data set and hit copy. So uh, I hit control C. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can just go down to edit and then copy. I, I think we all know that. Um, and then we're going to open up Excel. So in Excel, what we'll do is we'll go to Edit. We'll go to Paste. And those data are now pasted into Excel. The problem is Excel doesn't see this as multiple columns. Excel sees all of these data in this first column A. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to Data. And then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to say Text to Columns. And this is a little different on each Excel, but basically, if you go to the data menu, there's something that says text to columns. It may not be in the same place as where it is on my computer. Um, this little window is going to open up. What we want to do is we want to check delimited. We'll click next. Then I said this was a comma delimited file. So what you want to do is you want to click this box that says comma. And then if you hit finish, what will happen is those data will now be sorted into columns and those columns were divided by commas which which weather underground put in automatically so a, a csv file or a comma delimited uh, column, uh, sorry a comma delimited delimit uh, boy you know what i mean a comma separated how's that delimited um, file is a very common file so um, there's a bunch of stuff in this file that we don't care about these temperatures so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select everything here 
other than the date and the precipitation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say edit, delete. Okay, so now I just have a column that has date and it has precipitation and this is the historical, historical precipitation, uh, which is kind of cool. And if you want to see something cool, what we can do is we can select all these. And this is just a side note. This is not... Um, We can select all these, and then what we can say is we can say chart, and we can create a scatter plot. It's actually okay. And this scatter plot will allow us to let me actually get some more to this. This scatter plot will actually allow us to show what the precipitation history was from this site. Um, but that, that's just a side note. So um, what, what I basically did was I went in, if you guys remember, um, I went into the Weather Underground. Um, I clicked on the location, the Audubon site. I then went down and said, hey, I need to get the yearly, I need to get the yearly uh, data. I need to view that. I went down to the tab um, that says table. I downloaded those data. I took these data. I put them into Excel. And this is your historical data set for one of these sites. So you need to do this for the other three sites. Okay? And what that does, going back to the um, equation, is that tells you P sub X. Okay? So that this, th in this case, what this chart that we're just looking at shows you is this shows you the precipitation at time x. So each one of these is time x. This is the precipitation at this given location. So you need to do that for the other three locations. The other thing that we need to, in order to determine this equation is we need to find out what lambda is. And lambda is based on the distance between our uh, between the infiltration basin and each of the weather stations. So if we look back on the Weather Underground map, basically what we want to do is we want to find the distance between this Audubon site and what and our infiltration basin. And the easiest way to do this, I think you can do this a lot of ways, right? You could put this into Google Maps and you could measure based on the scale, but I think really the easiest way to do this is to go into Google Earth. And so if you go into Google Earth, what I've given you is I've given you in the lab, I've given you the... The, the, the latitude and longitude of each of the stations. So if you go into Google Earth and you plug in the latitude and the longitude of these stations in, what will happen is it will put a pin at that location. And so I put pins in at all the locations of the three sites. So we were looking at the Audubon site here, and then I put a pin in at the infiltration basin here. So if we want to determine what the distance is between those sites, uh, Google Maps has this cool tool, they're clever guys, right? Um, which is Show Ruler. And this showing ruler um, brings up this little tiny box here, which allows us to click on a location. In this case, we're going to click on the Audubon site location. Oh, let me click one more time. And then I can drag my cursor to the infiltration basin. I can hit the cursor. That drew a straight line between those, which is what we need if we go back to this equation here. That is what D is, right? So it picked a straight line, and it's telling me that the length on the ground between those two points is 3,145, in this case, meters. All right? So you'll want to do that for each of the locations. That then gets plugged in for D, and then you can determine lambda. And then once you have lambda, you can go back to your spreadsheet and, and what I would do is I would probably make a master spreadsheet with, with each of the precipitation locations and then with your lambda values. And then what you can do is use this equation here to calculate what the precipitation is at a given location. Um, and so that's really, really all there is to do. Um, and we, we talked about how to run this equation in class. So you guys should have notes from class on how to do this. So I, I totally feel confident that you can do this. Really, the way to do this is to do this in Excel, or if you know how to use MATLAB, do this in MATLAB. Um, we're talking about 365 days worth of precipitation. 
So as a result, this is not a hand calculation that you should be making. This is a calculation you should be making um, in some kind of program where you can just put the equation in once and then drag that equation down. All right? So again, uh, just going through the steps one more time, uh, you're going to go to the Weather Underground site. You're going to find um, the four locations uh, for the precipitation data, which is the Northwest Williamsville, the Autobahn, the Green Acres, and the Berwyn Drive. You're going to download those data into Excel, right, where you're going to have a column that is time and a column that is precipitation. You're going to then go to Google Maps. You're going to determine the distance for each of these locations in Google Maps. Then once you know the distance, you can calculate what this constant is lambda for each of your four stations. Okay? And then you're just going to, in Excel, write this equation, formulate this equation out, and calculate what precipitation is uh, at this location here. And then once you have precipitation at that location, uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you just to plot that precipitation through time um, for your infiltration basin so you will have a map um, similar to what I showed before uh, where we basically have um, something that looks like this, right? Where it has time on this axis, precipitation on this axis, and on this case, this will be precipitation for the infiltration basin based on this, this weighted distance kind of thing. Um, so I think it should be pretty straightforward. Hopefully, um, well, well you, you probably don't even need this video, right? You probably don't need me walking you through this. Um, you probably can just use the lab. You guys are super sharp. But, um, but th hopefully this video will help you guys.